Hi, I'm with Kaden. Uh, Kaden Chang. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to your office. Yes, uh, that's good. My purpose is uh, coming here is I want to inspire all the cancer survivors around the world to listen to your story. Yes. Uh, hopefully, you can contribute a little bit of your story, uh, cancer patient, to get the motivation, fight over their disease at the end, also to be part of us, to be uh, survivors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> first question I want to ask is, how is your feeling when you first time discover that you have cancer? I think the, the first thing was shock. Why is it me? And then my mind went blank and then uh, I was in complete denial. Yeah, so it was shock. Okay, denial. Mm. Then the denial phase was quite long, maybe about a week. When was yeah, my first uh, episode? First. That was somewhere in I think mid twenty ten. It should be June or July. Oh, quite long time ago. Yeah, quite quite long time ago. Yeah, it's been nine years. Ago. My normal type of cancer. Uh, mine was kidney cancer. In a sense that uh, within my left kidney, the cells were tumorous. Uh. Oh, how will you discover it, the symptoms? Uh, that there wasn't anything. It was by chance that I have a severe pain on my right, oh. and it's got nothing to do with the cancer. It was actually kidney stone. Because oh. the nature of my job, I, I cannot drink too much water because I, yeah. I need to speak. Yeah. So eventually, mm -hmm. it was, the kidney stone was really severe pain, really so painful that I can, cannot even stand up. So my old office was in Pearl Center in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. Ambulance came, fetch me, go S G H A and E. They did an ultrasound scan, it was stone. And after that, the next week, they put me into a specialist clinic. Mm -hmm. The doctor did a scan on the right, it was slightly stone. But somehow, he scanned on the left. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be on the right only, but he, yeah. for some reason, he went and scanned the left. So after he scanned the left, he didn't tell me anything. He went next door, asked a senior consultant to come in. So I was thinking, well, something must be wrong. Why do you go next door? <laughs> ask, the, ask the person to come in and then you don't tell me anything. Right? So when the senior consultant came in, same thing, he scanned on the right and then scanned on the left. Then he said, oh, actually the right, I'm not so worried. Then he said, I'm worried about the left. I mean, what are you talking about? Why are you worried about the left, right? When the pain is on the right. Then he said, oh, on the left. I mean, he said something that he shouldn't say. Nah. He, he said, I found something sinister. He used the exact word was sinister. Sinister, that means evil. Bad. I mean, what? your doctor, right? You should say something very scientific. So at the moment, it's like my heart sang. Uh, and then he said, he suspect there's a tumor. Why? Wow, you know, the word tumor is like, I mean, you've been through it. Uh, you know, uh, you know, tumor. I mean, you hear, you hear from other people, but we always assume that it will never happen to us. But of course, at that moment, that split second, it was like, I mean, we cannot rationalize. So, so it's, it was like a death sentence. Uh. Yeah, we didn't even think like stage one, stage two. It was like mm. tumor equals cancer. Cancer somehow relates to death, you know. So the time your job is already doing the. Yeah, yeah. I've been in this line since 2008. So it was. In mid 2010, that's how I discovered tumor. But the preliminary was still preliminary. Mm. It was saying that most likely is a tumor. How you managed to get uh, recover from this cancer? Okay. okay, in short, the tumor was found inside the left kidney. So the cancer cells didn't go to the because after they removed my entire left kidney, so now I so called healed. Mm. Is I went for surgery. So there was a 30 centimeter scar. They removed my entire left kidney. Then after that, did some prognosis. Mm. So they realized that the cancer cells didn't reach the peripheral of the kidney. Mm. So the peripheral of the kidney was still healthy cells. Mm. So from there, they conclude that the cells should not have left the kidney. It should be contained. Since the tumor cell is contained and they removed the kidney plus the surrounding fatty tissues, right? Doctors assume that it's okay. Yeah, but, but it wasn't. Uh. So they removed my entire left kidney, they leave the ureter alone. Ureter is the tube where the kidney process the urine and then pass through ureter. Then ureter will, will transfer the urine to the bladder. The bladder store it and then you pass out. So what happened is after they remove it, surgeon was very confident, like, hey, we removed it so much, we removed cells was healthy or peripheral. You're perfectly fine. Mm. But of course, a patient being patient, you trust yeah. professionals. So when the doctor say fine, you assume it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't, I mean, you're fine. I mean, I cannot challenge you. Then what happened was in, then you know, mm. regular checkup. So my checkup was quite simple. It was every six months blood test. And then initially it was CT scan. But of course, I didn't know the technical detail about how detailed CT scan was. Trust that a doctor will know what they're doing. So every year go for CT scan. And it was in September 2014 uh, that the blood test indicator. Mine is an enzyme called lactodehydrogenase, LDH. Mm. So it's back. The normal one should be below 500. I don't know what's the unit to be below 500. But mine was 1002. So it's an indirect test to say that the something is wrong. It's not conclusive that it's cancer, but it just says that it, there may be infection or probably cancer. So the next thing they do is they put me to a CT scan. Then after that, they found two lumps. One on the u ureter itself, the tube itself, like the tube, oh. right? Then one is attached to it. Mm. Another one is, if this is a bladder, right? Very kidney on top. So one attached to it. One is the at the joint between the ureter and the bladder. It was on the outside. So a portion was attached to the tube, a portion was attached to the the bladder itself. I mean, from there, yeah. I use my common sense. Uh. Mm. That means the cells will have leaked out from the kidney. Yeah. It went through the ureter, yeah. formed a tumor, yeah. and some went down to the bladder 
that form another tumor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, what's this, right? <laughs> the doctor at that point in time, first immune thing was to go for another surgery. It was horrible at like, the surgery. But I still tell myself that I need to be grateful. Like. I mean, it's only painful temporary. At, at least I could be healed, right? So they removed the entire ureter with the tumor attached to it. And then right now, the remaining tumor and second one is attached to the bladder. Mm-hmm. I worry it's inside. Yeah. So they slice off and then they stitch back. So in other words, my bladder function is still okay. I don't mm-hmm. I don't wear a urinary pad. Mm-hmm. But after the second episode, the surgeon lo- loses his confidence. He said this. He said you better go and see the oncologist and see But before he tell me, I already go yeah. and see it. So I don't have to wait for you. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point in time, is uh, I better take ownership on my own life. Mm-hmm. After my first episode, my learning is I think I better do my own thinking rather than yeah. taking instruction purely from the doctors. So in fact, after the first episode, mm-hmm. I initiated to ask mm-hmm. the surgeon right, to give me a referral letter to go to NCCS. And he refused, you know. Can you imagine a doctor refused a patient's request? Mm-hmm. But I, I'm quite assertive. Right? So I told him, I mean, you can refuse. I'm a patient. Mm-hmm. Body belongs to me. I would suggest that you write for me. Yeah. And then my wife would be beside me. Maybe there's some form of pressure. And so he wrote the letter. I say, you can't pros- possibly not write the letter. Right? Yeah, I mean, there's no work on your part. So he wrote the referral letter and in 2010, actually, I was seen oncology. So it was at NCCS that I discovered the tumor. So does it mean? It simply means that if I'm not so intelligent, eh? if I rely purely on the words of the surgeon, I will have died. Because surgeons, they're very reactive. They wait for something bad to happen, right? Then they try to cut you up. But it's too late. Eh? So the best way is to have it checked and uh, discover early. So that was the second episode in 24. Oh, you're okay. Okay as of the scan. Eh? Mm-hmm. You know, right? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this year, February, I have relapsed. Mm-hmm. The same cancer cells which originated from 2010, it went inside the bladder and formed a tumor inside the bladder. Uh, so I, I went for a scope and they shoved this thing in. Doctor asked me to see it. It was very painful. He asked me to see the tumor. So I saw the tumor in my very eyes in front of the screen. It's like well, a tiny little balloon attached to the inside skin of the bladder. Then I could see the skin enveloping a tumor, right? Full of blood vessels. So that means the body naturally supplied blood and nutrients to the tumor. If I didn't go for my regular scan, the tumor would have been Again, at any point of time, you know, patients being patient, at any point of time, they could have just leave. So I think three times is too many.